talking to you a bit about um, managing uh, Kubernetes clusters from Python using um, an open source project we wrote called Key. Um, first I want to share with you my journey here briefly um, and in some ways uh, mitigate um, the both inadequate and, and poorly prepared presentation that I'm going to give you today. Um, I submitted my uh, talk to Europython about four weeks ago, um, and uh, I was about here when I saw the email saying my talk had been accepted. I thought, hey, Europython's called my bluff, and uh, I need to prepare a talk. I thought, oh, it's okay. I'll, uh, same thing. I'll work on it while I'm here. Um, so I went to the my drama no conference in, in Poland. Estoy buscando el evento aquí, um, pero no lo veo. ¿Por qué no veo yo aquí lo que Mi excusa. Sí. Pero en debajo encontrás. Ya, pero sí, 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 pero es que no, no, no me coincidía ahora y no lo oía. Sí, sí, ya sé que con retraso, pero me tenía que coincidir con esta. Ahora sí, pero no la oigo. No, no, está el volumen a tope. Y aquí estoy recibiendo audio. Deploy as a software as a service, and we chose Google Compute Engine and um, GKE. Um, and GKE is the hosted Kubernetes implementation that, uh, that Google provide. And um, we, we, we kinda, we're quite keen on dog fooding and we wanted to use our own solution to monitor our stuff. And also we needed to, to provision um, monitoring instances for customers who are signing up to the SaaS so that they could actually you know, click a button and a monitoring instance would be deployed on Kubernetes. Um, so uh, we needed to interact with the Kubernetes API. We're all Python people, so we had to do it with Python. Um, so that's why we, we wrote Kube. Now it's important to say that there are other um, Python uh, API wrappers out there. Um, and I'd strongly encourage you to go off and look at them um, so you can see how rubbish they are and how good ours is. Um, no, seriously, um, go off and have a look. They might be a better fit for you. Um, and also, if you do end up choosing one of these instead of RQ, um, it'd be really great if you could come back and tell us what you thought was better, um, because that would be interesting to know, and we could try and fix uh, anything that we've got going on in ours. But um, we wrote ours 
uh, we wrote cube in the way we wrote cube because we wanted to abstract away from what's a somewhat moving target as far as the Kubernetes API goes. Um, it's also got some idiosyncrasies that you don't necessarily need to um, be exposed to when you're, when you're interacting with, with Kubernetes via its API. So we wanted to kind of like create an opinionated version of the API um, that made things a little bit more palatable for, 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 the, for the user of that API. <clears throat> we also wanted a clean watch interface. Um, watch interface allows you to um, uh, get, get uh, notifications of changes to resources within Kubernetes and some of the other um, offerings that were about at the time. Some have come and gone since, since we started, but um, the ones that were about didn't, didn't do that very well. Um, we wanted something that was Pythonic, and we didn't want to use like code generation swagger, and that's a theme in, in, in some of these um, alternatives. But, you know, um, you guys take a look and, and take your choice. Um, so, I hate it when to, uh, um, speakers say, oh, hands up, do you know this, do you know that? But just a very quick show of hands is um, who has kind of been exposed to Kubernetes? Okay, so sort of third of you. Okay, I'll, I'll try and railroad through this because time's at a premium. Um, so, so, so Kubernetes is about orchestrating um, uh, Docker containers, essentially, um, and uh, but not just Docker containers. Uh, Docker came out of Truity file systems, and if any of you have been exposed to Solaris and Solaris zones, similar kind of concept. Um, what it gives you is um, uh, uh, basically an immutable deployment component. It's easy to author. Um, there's a runtime that runs on many platforms. Um, and uh, it, I say, allows you to develop an immutable deployment component that underpins um, DevOps practices and continuous deployment. Um, across multiple nodes, it's hard to manage um, Docker containers in the raw. Um, um, so especially for scale and resilience. So that's why control planes like um, uh, Kubernetes and Docker Swarm uh, came about. And um, I mean, Google were already doing this. Google had um, a system, or have a system called Borg, um, which uh, uses LXC containers and it manages those across their enterprise. It allowed Google to uh, scale um, developer productivity and the number of services they're offering to their customers internally and externally um, without the corresponding increase in operational overhead. So there was obviously you know, um, it was a useful, a useful technology. Um, Kubernetes has had an amazing amount of momentum behind it, and it's interesting how many, in quotes, competitors have actually got behind Kubernetes, where initially they thought to position themselves as direct competitors to Kubernetes. They kind of since um, seem to acknowledge that they have a particular sweet spot. Maybe it's in cluster management um, or, or, or managing uh, containers on very, very large scales. Um, and they, they seem to have um, all sought to um, accommodate Kubernetes in, in their offering and in their space. So, um, you know, the only sort of like uh, uh, sort of offering that hasn't really done that, I suppose, is Docker Swarm, because that is, you know, trying to do exactly the same thing. Um, so, so, how does it work? There you go. Happy with that? <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, it's not very helpful, that kind of diagram, you know, and, and it just takes forever, and I haven't got time. So um, I just want to go through some key concepts. So in, in Kubernetes, we have the idea of a cluster, which is a single homogeneous um, cluster of nodes, compute resource. Um, watch out for a thing called Ubernetes, um, which is kind of a, uh, an attempt to federate multiple Kubernetes clusters, so you can have basically multiple clusters with different um, kinds of shapes of resource running inside it. Um, a node is um, uh, some resource where, um, where pods are scheduled, and pods are the smallest unit of scheduling um, that uh, runs the actual containers. So um, Docker, but not exclusively Docker, there's also support coming for rocket containers, um, and uh, the Docker containers run inside um, the pods, and those are the things that the Kubernetes system schedules. Um, there's the, uh, the concept of replica sets, um, and uh, what they do is they, it's a specification that defines um, the pods um, and how many uh, replicas of those pods there need to be for scale and resilience, amongst other things. Um, there's also services. Services target pods and expose their capabilities at the edge of the Kubernetes cluster. So um, you can think about the actual Docker containers, I suppose, you know, 
uh, as nano services and then the actual pods are microservices and then the service definitions provide actual services um, for, for a consumer. Um, labels are an interesting thing um, and we'll be looking at those very, very quickly. Um, and they're key value pairs that are associated with um, resources within Kubernetes that enable the scheduler to um, organize the objects within it. Um, and there's lots of other stuff that we could talk about, but that's probably enough to get us going through the next part of the, um, of the talk. Um, something, something, 30 minutes. So, about 30 minutes. so some, other, some key concepts for Cube, and we need to get the terminology straight, really, um, right at the beginning, is um, principally the API, the Kubernetes API, defines, um, the, uh, the, defines kinds and defines resources. So a kind is the name of an object schema. Essentially, it's a resource type. And a resource is a representation of a system entity um, uh, that's sent or re retrieved from the uh, API um, by JSON over HTTP. And resort, there's two types of resources, um, collections and elements. So these are kind of Kubernetes terms I'm using, but they do map quite nicely into, into Cube. Um, so for example, a pod is a pod resource, um, whereas nodes uh, is a node list resource, and that's a collection of nodes. So try and bear that in mind. Um, additionally, it's really important to um, understand the separation of specification and status in Kubernetes. Um, when uh, an API update is made, um, uh, the specification of the resource that you're updating is made, and that's available immediately. Um, so that's almost like an atomic operation. Um, but over time, Kubernetes will work to bring the status of the resource whose specification has changed up towards that specification. So the system will drive towards the most recent spec. Um, and that makes the behavior of Kubernetes level-based, not edge-based, um, which uh, is quite a nice feature. So, okay, so now the tricky bit. Um, I'm going to open a terminal window. Uh, bear with me for a moment. I'm gonna try and mirror this display. Yay, that works, okay, cool. Okay, so what I've got running here is, um, yes, sorry. Could you open text? Oh, I could, yeah, I should have tried that before, actually, shouldn't I? Hmm, now. Uh, say when. when? <laughs> is that good? Sure, okay. Okay, um, so I've got a single node Kubernetes cluster running on my MacBook Air. By the way, if anyone's interested, in, it was really easy to do. Um, if anyone's interested in knowing how to do that, just come and see me at the stand and we can have a chat about it. It's quite cool. Um, right, so um, what I'm going to do, okay, right, so Python, cube. Um, here we go. So what you do is just import cube, spelling it properly, right. Remember that America thing where I was like really jet lagged and was up till three o'clock in the morning trying to write this stuff, so be nice. <laughs> um, so import cube. Um, so the, uh, the key entry point in the cube API is, um, is a cluster. So we can say something like cluster equals um, cube dot cluster and we create an instance of one of those things. So that gives us a cluster object. Um, so there's, um, if you want, if you're, okay, so sorry, one thing I forgot to mention was um, when you're interacting with the Kubernetes API, the, um, the preferred um, approach is to um, run a uh, kube control proxy. And what that does is it, it, it proxies the kube control API from wherever it's running to localhost on your machine. So what I've got here is quite simply, um, Cube control proxy, you can just about see it down the bottom running here. Um, if you're uh, running your Python code using Cube um, you know, in a container, uh, then what you normally do is have a sidecar container inside your pod. So one's running the proxy and one's running your Python code. Okay, so the other thing I can do here is I can specify um, a URL if the um, 
if the uh, if the proxy is running on a non-standard endpoint or port. Um, so we can just say localhost uh, port number 8001 slash API, uh, something like that. Um, and then we get, obviously, a cluster instance. Um, you can use context managers as well. So yay. Um, so you can say something like with cube, uh, with cube.cluster um, as, uh, say, k. Uh, k.nodes. We'll talk about this in a sec. So the k.nodes has returned a node view, and that will become clearer in a minute. So there's a few ways to actually create your, your entry point um, as a cluster. So do you remember I was talking earlier about collections and elements? Well, they're um, represented here as, as um, views and items. So this kind of uh, nodes thing here, because it's plural, you can see that's actually um, a node list. So that's a collection. Um, and I can iterate over that um, to get actual view items out. Um, so let's have a look at a few of these. So we've got cluster.nodes. Um, the cluster um, object has a few of these things, um, many of these things. And you can look at the documentation. It's all on read the docs. Um, it's a work in progress, um, but there's some essentials in there. Um, and uh, we can see things like the clusters, replica sets, and um, namespaces, and that kind of stuff. So, OK. Um, So we want to get a resource item out of a view. So I can say something like um, RS, because I'm going to get a replica set um, from my cluster dot replica sets. Um, uh, and I can do a dot fetch. And I need to specify the name. Now, um, something I prepared earlier, um, I have um, this is just a cube control. Um, uh, on the command line, and I can get the replica sets, and I know I've got one called service demo. Um, so I'm going to say get me service, uh, service demo. Um, but I have to specify the namespace. So I have to say namespace equals um, default is the namespace that that's running in. Can you see how bad my typing is? Shouldn't be allowed near live demos. Um, and then we look at RS. Oh, look, we've got a replica set item now. So this is an actual um, an element as opposed to a, um, a collection. Um, and it's got some attributes associated with it. So I can say, look at some metadata, and I can see what the name is. And lo and behold, it is service demo. So I actually got given the right thing. Um, and uh, I can see what namespace that came from. And I can also see what labels are associated with um, that particular replica set. So, sorry, getting a bit closer to the bottom of the screen. Um, OK, so um, what's important to remember about resource um, uh, resources is that they're versioned. Um, Kubernetes versions all of the resources it returns across the API. And if you remember when I was talking about the separation of spec and status, um, when you get given um, a resource item back, it's versioned. Um, so you know we can see here that rs.meta.version is version 1561. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, um, so one thing I forgot to mention was, I think I did mention briefly, is that these, um, uh, these uh, collections are actually iterators. So I can do cool things like a list comprehension. So I can say rs for rs in cluster dot replica sets. Um, and you get, there's only one, but you get a list of those things back. Um, so I can build a list, say, for example, saying um, node dot meta dot version um, for node in cluster.nodes. So that's going to give me a list of all the versions uh, for all the nodes in the cluster. So there's only one, um, and at the moment it's that version. If you keep doing this, um, eventually you will see um, a different version coming out. So that means that the state of the, um, of, the, of the node resource has changed, because something's changed about the node. It's like used a slightly different amount of CPU, and that's been reported, and that's been whatever. So 
when you're interacting um, through Cube, uh, you need to make sure you've always got the latest version of the object. Um, otherwise, you know, you could be um, looking at stuff that's wrong or out of date. Um, okay, so back to um, labels. Um, so let's have a look at our replica set um, uh, object that we had. Um, and it's got some labels associated with it. It's got one. Um, it's actually a dictionary. So I can do stuff like um, look at uh, run, the run attribute. Um, and get the value service demo. Um, it is, however, uh, immutable, so you can't mess up that way. And that was kind of a design decision um, of, 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 of ours when we were writing Cube, that we wanted every operation to be done by a, a set call. Um, so you can update the label um, using a set command. So you could uh, say something like, um, uh, let's add a new one, foo. Um, and we'll set it to um, label dot set uh, foo, and we'll give it a value of bar. That's not predictable at all, is it? Um, okay, so we get one back. Okay, let's have a look at rs. See if anyone spots what's going on here. Um, rs dot meta dot labels, um, and it's not there. That's really annoying. Um, so. Uh, that's because I'm actually looking at um, the old version of RS um, because that's the one that got returned from um, an earlier call, that version. Um, so what I can do is this. I'm going to be, be um, fancy and use a, um, a list comprehension uh, because I know what I'm expecting. RS for RS in uh, cluster dot replica sets um, and I'll get the first value out of that and I should get an RS and now if I look at RS.version um, lo and behold it's a slightly different version yay okay so now let's have a look at RS.meta.labels um, and we can see that our foo attribute is on there now um, so that's really nice um, and uh, sorry so updating a label is kind of the same as um, as creating a label, so I can do that. It's returned my um, a new replica set, which I didn't assign to a variable, so I'll do that. I'll look at rs.version. Um, we've got a new version, and let's have a look at the labels, and we've got baz set on there. So, cool. Um, so, so, so to go on about labels a lot, um, one, it was kind of easy to do in this. <laughs> and the other thing is um, uh, they're a really good way of managing your Kubernetes cluster. If you want to manage um, the way your resources, you know, um, pods, um, uh, services, etc., cetera, are, are, are managed, um, then, you know, setting um, and resetting labels is a good way of doing that. Um, okay, so we can also delete labels. So we can say rs. Um, dot uh, meta dot labels um, dot delete um, and we can say we want to delete foo and I'm not going to be caught out a second time I'm actually going to assign that to rs <laughs> and then look at rs dot meta dot labels and foo's gone um, okay so that's kind of the end of the um, that bit the live code demo bit so I'm going to go back to Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, so briefly talk about some of the features that I haven't got time to demo. Um, and uh, in the latest version of Cube, we've got creating and deleting resources, which actually makes it quite useful. So you can actually go in, create pods, delete pods, um, replica sets, services, namespaces, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just a simple create call. You pass in a uh, JSON specification, and um, it does send a call to, to Kubernetes. Um, we've also got a watch API um, implementation, which, you know, uh, say, come by the booth and let us show you, because it's really cool. Um, and uh, my colleague who wrote that bit actually wrote a blog about um, how it was tricky. Um, and, and he's done all you guys a great service because he's insulated you from all the horrors of how to do watch support um, using Python and over HTTP. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's neat. 
Um, there's also, if you remember the fetch command that I used to get resource items from collections, um, you, there's actually a filter capability. So you can filter the returned results on, um, on, on, on label values, which is also really natty and um, really cool, and I didn't get a chance to show you. Finally, um, the cluster instance, which is your entry point, has a proxy to the Kubernetes API. So if all else fails and you want to get to the actual API, in Python, while you're using Cube, you just use cluster.proxy to do that. So, um, okay, so um, time for questions. Um, it's on Bitbucket, um, and I'm really interested to hear if you all think Bitbucket sucks and you want you, should, you think it should be on, on, on Git, or if it doesn't really matter to people. Um, I've had a sharp intake of breath from some audiences when I've asked them about that. Um, and anyway, that's where it is. Happy to move it. Um, check us out on Kobe.io. Um, I'm Kobe, Kobe CTO. Um, follow me on Twitter because I'm funny. And um, uh, yeah, so I'll take questions if we've got time. Oh, no. Thank you. Oh, good time. <laughs> Hello. Okay so, okay, so the question was, um, are we here all week and can you come and see us? Basically. Um, and uh, yes, we're in the vendor area. Um, we've got like, one of those little booths on the green and yellow carpets. Um, we, you'll see that that fancy graphic should be up on a monitor. Um, and we can show you, you know, where we've got. It's still in beta, but we can show you where we've got and you can have a chat with us. And my colleague, by the way, is one of the uh, developers on PyDotTest. Um, so some of you may have heard of him anyway. So. Yes. Oh, okay, so the question was, um, what uh, version of Kubernetes are we working with here? Uh, oh, it wasn't. What does the version number mean? Is there any changes when something happens? Oh, okay, so it's just an opaque number, um, and, and uh, it just represents um, a, a, a version of the resource com to compare to the last time the resource changed. Now, depending on the resource type, the kind, it, that could be anything. So, for example, for a node, it could be because some of the node attributes have changed. It could be because a label has been updated on a, replication, on a replica set. So it, that's when the version number is incremented, not just when you make the call, but when Kubernetes itself changes the, the, the resource. No. <laughs> so, so what I should have said was um, don't, don't rely on the version numbers, just always get the latest version of the object. Uh, so I, I, show, I showed you the version numbers. I was kind of advised, don't show people the version numbers, but I just thought it was an interesting thing, so I, I did that. Yeah. Any other Okay. Come to the booth, ask my colleague, and um, because, yeah, and he'll, he'll give you a really good answer. I'll give you an average answer, he'll give you a really good answer. So, thanks, guys. <laughs>